Gentlemen, you want to be a Viking, want to have a cool Viking haircut? Get yourself the Norman crop. Hey YouTube, welcome back to our channel. My name is Elena. And I'm Bjorn. And we are Viking Age reenactors and living historians here to talk with you about your favorite Viking Age shows. Today, we're going to be continuing with Norsemen, Season 3, Episode 2. How many times does the Midgar serpent go around Midgar? He goes one turn around. That is correct. I get to be one of your warriors. <laughs> Need to collect myself for a bit. Yep. So we've talked on our channel a little bit about female warriors before, um, mainly to sort of point out how not every woman in a village would be a warrior. They would be few and far between, and this show actually does that pretty well. They have a single, you know, their token female warrior, and that's about it. Every other woman in the show doesn't really do much in terms of raiding. They know how to fight, if need be, uh, which is actually pretty accurate. Um, you know, women would be taught by their husbands how to defend themselves if the husband was away and somebody came to their home so that they would know how to protect themselves and their family. So the show actually does a pretty good job about uh, showing what the female role would be like or closer to it, essentially. They do have a female warrior who was basically born to be a warrior, and you can tell that. And you would have those standouts, but the majority of women um, in history and on the show would be taking care of the home. Yep. The fact is I'm uh, getting married, and in that matter, uh, I need a, a trusted friend. So, uh, I would like to ask you, would you do me the honor of uh, being my uh, <coughs> best <coughs> man? I like almost feel bad for him. He stabbed himself in the leg to get out of being his best man. That's some really serious dedication. Yeah. Can't believe that. We're seven minutes in. <laughs> and I've already seen more than I wanted to. <laughs> we don't really know that much about wedding ceremonies back in the Viking Age, right? Yeah, there's not a ton that's like recorded that can be specifically traced back to that like we the concept of like a best man i think goes back like a fair amount i think it's mostly like if like your fiance or whatever had like a lover who was going to try to stop the wedding and like take her away from you basically your mm -hmm. best man would be like the one who fights him off essentially gotcha. i think i think i don't know that might just be like complete and utter horse <laughs> um but I feel like that's what I've heard about it in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, that doesn't really necessarily date back to like the Viking Age. Like we know a little bit about like how it would be, like how the custom would kind of be, um, but not really like a whole great deal that we can confirm specifically. The thing that's very accurate in here is that the woman would have a voice in who she married. It goes kind of hand in hand with you know the freedoms and rights that women enjoyed. Uh, yeah. in Scandinavia during the Viking Age. Yeah, absolutely. She definitely did have a, a fair amount of a say. You know, ultimately it wasn't really her decision still, I think. Um, but she would still have a say. In she it, would still yeah. have a say, and it was considered like uh, like a good omen, essentially, if like she was obeyed, essentially. You know, like if, if there was like a marriage or like a, a coupling that was agreed upon that she didn't really consent to or she wasn't like interested in, um, it was kind of seen as just like foreshadowing of a bunch of crap down the road that would just go horribly wrong. Like, oh, surprise. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder how that could ever happen. <laughs> and like you'll see even like in, in like the Icelandic sagas and things, like um, the, the woman will often be like kind of broached to see what her opinion is kind of on the matter and if they think it's a fair match mm -hmm. um and then it's always kind of like negotiated with their father and stuff in terms of like the specifics one other note that i wanted to make it's actually really cool to see uh a woman cutting somebody's hair with those like the like, shears yeah the shears yeah. just for the accuracy of it yep like that was actually that's actually pretty awesome yeah like shears <laughs> were definitely like a, a tool that we 
found a bunch of times. Um, and it was kind of made of like this spring steel essentially so that it would mm-hmm. like kind of be able to be like pincered like that, you know? Yeah. They're, they're not the easiest things to use. I'll say that much. Even yeah, when they're sharpened. Not. Yeah. Even when they're sharpened, they oftentimes just like rotate around themselves and they're not that easy to. Yeah, really absolutely. Like they they gotta work. be, yeah, they gotta be pretty precisely like oriented essentially because mm-hmm. if they're not then you can get like a big gap at which point you're not really cutting anything and mm-hmm. it could be really tricky but i mean it definitely makes sense that they would use them for like cutting hair or something same with like any kind of just like a knife or like a sharp axe or something too potentially mm-hmm. um for like getting that like, close cropped kind of thing um but yeah. like the shears were also often used to shear sheep as well you know that's yep. primarily i think what it was used for but yeah exactly. definitely makes sense or at least it's a decent theory that it could be used for Cutting somebody's hair, too. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. those haircuts that they had are yep. examples of haircuts that Scandinavians could have had. Because, like we said before, we can't know for sure. Yeah, so we, we really don't know a lot for sure, but we do know some. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we talked maybe off camera about the Subian knot mm-hmm. um, as, like, an older hairstyle. But this one with, like, the whole back of the head shaved and just, like, the short front crop... Um, It is a historically accurate hairstyle of the Normans, um, because in the Bayou Tapestry, uh, there are a bunch of of these male warrior figures um, depicted with that style of haircut. So it is something that dates back to that contemporary period. It's technically like a Norman hairstyle, not necessarily a Scandinavian Mm -hmm. one, but, I mean, the Normans are descendants of Vikings, so you could argue. Yeah. We don't really know if it was a... Scandinavian Nordic haircut that just kind of existed still throughout that region or if it maybe had some regional influence from the Frankish territory or anything we don't know but it definitely fits the time period and it definitely is one of the one of the really good go-to hairstyles. Gentlemen you want to be a Viking want to have a cool Viking haircut get yourself the Norman crop. The one whose freedom I would like to purchase Sleep. Please don't take it personally, Jornstein. Try to be a little happy for me instead. I was wondering what was gonna happen with the family. <laughs> uh, Should have guessed that she'd just like walk away from it completely indifferent because she's terrible. That is her character. Isn't that like the exact same thing that she said the last time? Like, why can't you just be happy for me or something? Yeah. Yep. Buying slaves freedom was absolutely a thing though. Yeah. They're not wrong about that. Nope. It is kind of like a weird thing that he would just like every year free a slave, maybe. Like that's yeah. a little bit of like a special kind of thing. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's like the Hunger Games. There is hope for somebody. <laughs> yeesh. God. Um, but yeah, I mean, freeing slaves was absolutely like not commonplace necessarily, but it happened enough that like we know a fair amount about it. Yeah. Um, and then they become like a free person. They wouldn't necessarily have like they wouldn't be like on the exact same level as somebody who was like naturally born a free person i don't think mm-hmm. like there was still kind of like an association of like oh well they were a freed slave but like it would still give them all the rights and you know, that they typically receive in society and you know status and things like that so yeah. and then oftentimes they'd even um like stay on to to live with the family that freed them and just kind of continue living with them as well but just as like equals or you know, counterparts, essentially. To make sure that everyone knew that he was heir to Mulheim, they tattooed a huge M rune on his back. It's, it's kind of funny, actually, because uh, I was uh, sent up north and sold as a slave when I was a baby, and I have a huge tattoo on my back, so I can really relate to that story. Don't mix your filthy slave story with our proud family history. I am so happy that they just gave that backstory to Kark. I'm just like I'm amazed. S- I'm so happy about it. <laughs> it's it just makes it so much better, and I I'm at least glad that like he does have that. Yeah. You know, like he's actually the chieftain. Like he. But he's just like too sweet and like happy and like placated to like ever try for it. Yeah. That's precious. I love him so much. He's like my favorite character on this whole show. You can't handle the heat. Get out of the kitchen, no what? Or get out of the earth. Don't be more contemporary. <laughs> but she seems like a really nice lady. <laughs> 
that's just a perfect example of them using a modern saying yeah. <laughs> and then just turning it on its head. <laughs> yeah, there's like those little moments when they're just like very self aware. Sorry, I hate her forever now. I don't care. I just love Kark so much. Like, that is the worst thing ever. He's such a precious boy. He just wants to be loved. For you I'm, just, I'm just so accepting of it. Seriously. It's just like, oh, okay. And oh, well, you like, know, if you can't what? be 100% what? certain, then what? that's fine. But. <laughs> Terrible. I just discovered why Frey never got pregnant. <laughs> that would explain why I never had the baby with Oil. Huh? I just want to make a quick note on the drinking horns. I've been seeing them a lot. Uh, I can't remember if they were using them a lot in the first couple of seasons, but I've been seeing them a lot in this season, specifically uh, the first episode and this episode as well. Contrary to popular belief, uh, they did not walk around with horns on their belts, drinking out of them all the time. Um, drinking horns were usually used for uh, more like ritualistic practices and also feasts, um, you know, wedding ceremonies. Obviously, you'd have horns being passed around and everything. And they were a little bit more of a communal way to drink yeah. um, rather than just having a bunch of people with their own personal horns um, sitting around. During feasts, uh, one of the practices was to uh, pair up men and women who were unmarried and they would share a horn between them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, generally something like this, uh, they wouldn't just have their own personal horns to sit with. Yeah, yeah, it was used for something that would just kind of be passed around or at least shared between a couple people, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, they did use cups and you know, different mugs made out of either wood or bone. Or ceramic. Or ceramic, yeah. They weren't weren't, weren't on helmets, and they weren't drunk out of every day. <laughs> yep. There seems to be a lot of misconceptions about horns. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're probably too tired. Uh, just, just to make it the day after that, then? Yeah. Well, we'll just see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See you tomorrow. I have, like, secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> But all the more evidence that, like, Kark is just, like, the best he is. of creatures. He is. He's the best of subhumans. <laughs> I really hope something just terrific happens to him by accident. Well, I'm guessing that the wedding is going to be next episode. Yep. Probably. Can't wait for... He hasn't... They haven't, like, met each other yet. More secondhand embarrassment. Yep. <laughs> My goodness. Yep. Can't wait. For that oh, man. to fall apart and just like imagine being the brother of the chieftain and being so disregarded by everybody just nobody cares if you're there or not this is so sad i want it to be funny if this is just awful <coughs> i don't like this <coughs> we started off with funny we need to go back to that seriously well i was gonna comment on the world serpent but uh <laughs> And then the rest of the scene happened. <laughs> Our cat's asleep on the table in front of us. <laughs> Are these serious? <gasps> Migra's blot! Okay. First off, yes. Calm down. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just got like, really excited. <laughs> you don't remember when they were posting the te like the teasers about their filming for season 3 in front of Gildahal? I don't. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And hit the bell so you can be notified of our future videos. And we will see you in the next one.